Today in our 2016 Ford Escape, we're going to be installing the Draw Tight Max Frame Trailer Hitch, part number 75782. Here you can see our hitch installed. Most of it's going to be tucked up behind the bumper, with really only the receiver being visible. This Class 3 2 inch hitch is going to be custom fit for your Escape. It's got a 5 8 inch hitch pin hole. That also works with J pins for added security and anti rattle. It has round loop style safety chain mounts, which is going to have a nice wide hole so it'll work with numerous types of safety chains of various sizes. It is a built-in trailer connector extension, so you can mount your trailer bracket to this for your four pole or seven pole connectors. It's got a square tubular frame that's gonna be durable and tucked nicely between the bumper of your Escape. It has a reinforced collar for extra durability. It features a 525 pound tongue weight, which is the force going down on your receiving tube, and a 3,500 pound gross weight, which is the hauling capacity that it can pull behind it. When using a weight distribution system, the tongue weight's gonna to remain the same. However, your gross towing capacity is gonna to increase to 5,000 pounds. Now you do wanna check your vehicle's owner's manual to ensure it's capable of hauling those loads. And now to help you when deciding on accessories such as ball mounts, bike racks, cargo carriers, we're gonna give you a few measurements. From the top inside edge of the receiving tube to the ground, it's gonna be about 13 and a quarter inches. And from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the bumper, it's going to be about five and a half inches. And now that we've gone over some of the features, let's show you how to get it installed. To start our installation, we're going to need to make a little room. So we're going to drop our exhaust down, and we're going to get this cover out of our way. We're going to use a 13 millimeter to take our exhaust hangers down. And we'll do this on both sides. Now to get this cover out of the way, we're just going to remove the pins here at the bottom. There's only two. This can be done with either a screwdriver or a body pin removal tool like the one I'm using here. Now we're going to be removing these pins on each side. Take your screwdriver, press in, and then you can pry it up and pull it out. And we'll do that on the other side. And now we can pull this panel out of our way. And we'll set that aside. Now we need to trim our heat shield back. We're just going to trim right along the edge of the frame there. And we need to do this on both sides. You will need to use a 10 millimeter socket to remove the bolt at the back here. Now we can go ahead and trim our heat shield. We can just bend it down, use a pair of tin snips, and snip along that edge. You can leave the bolt hole in the back to reinstall as our hitch won't be making contact with that. Then we're going to repeat the same process on the passenger side. Now we can reinstall the small nut we removed earlier from our trimming process using your 10 millimeter socket. Next we need to modify this hole here to fit our carriage bolt. We're going to need to make it a little bit wider as the bolt won't fit. We can do this but just by using a file to take away a little material. And now it fits in there nicely. We'll need to do this again on our other side. Next we're going to be feeding our coiled wire through so we can feed our carriage bolts and spacers into our frame rail. We're going to start by taking the coiled end of the wire. We're going to start on the side of the frame rail here. Push that in. We're going to feed it back towards our modified hole here. You may have to stick your pinky up there to catch it. And then you can pull it right down. Now we're going to feed our spacer over our coiled end. Go ahead and just push that up in there. Then we're going to thread our carriage bolt onto our coiled end. Then we need to feed that up in there as well. Now we can just pull it right on through. Next we're going to take our coiled wire again. We're going to go through the small hole, feed it back to our modified hole run it out. And this time we're going to be using the shorter but wider spacer for this hole. We're going to slide it onto our coiled wire. We can go ahead and push that up in there. Feed our carriage bolt on and pull it through. We're going to be now be using our long spacer again. Slide it on our coiled wire. Thread our bolt onto our coiled wire push it up into our modified hole and put our spacer up in our modified hole and pull it back through. 
Now that we've got all our carriage bolts in on our driver's side, we're going to repeat the same process on our passenger side. Now we need to clean out our weld nuts. Go ahead and spray them with a little bit of lubricant. Then use a brush to clean the threads out. This will prevent bolts from locking up or seizing when installing them. And it'll just make it all around easier to install. And then do this with the other two bolts on the passenger side. Now we're going to prepare to put our hitch up. The side carriage bolts that we had slid through, we're just going to push them in a little bit because they'll interfere with our hitches for going up. But we do still need them there with our wire run so we can pull them through after we get our hitch put into place. Now we've grabbed an extra set of hands to help us feed the hitch up over our exhaust. While feeding the hitch up, make sure that you're running your carriage bolts through the appropriate holes. Now we can push our hitch up, pull our side bolt through, and that'll hold it in place. Now you're going to take your small chrome bolts, place a lock washer on it, and a flat washer, and these are going to go into the weld nuts that we cleaned out earlier. Now for our middle carriage bolt, we can go ahead and take our wire off. We're going to place on a flat washer followed by a lock washer and a nut. Now our rear carriage bolt and our side bolt are both going to get a conical tooth washer with the teeth facing towards the hitch and a nut. And you'll repeat this same process on the other side. Now we're going to snug up our two bottom bolts here so the hitch will line up with the hole we're going to place our next bolt in. then do that on both sides. Next we're going to take our black bolt, we'll put a washer on it and run it through the hitch. We'll need to put three washers between the hitch and the frame as a spacer, followed by our conical tooth washer facing inward towards the frame and our nut. We're going to prepare our three washers to make it easier to get them installed. We'll use some black electrical tape and wrap it around our washers to hold them together. And we'll use a zip tie to make a small handle make it easier to feed it up there. And now we're ready to put it in the vehicle. Now we'll take our washer assembly we made. We're going to slide it between the hitch here and the rear of our bumper frame. It may take a screwdriver and a little hammer to kind of tap it up into place because it's a little bit tight. Now that we've got our spacers in place, we're going to put one washer on our black bolt and then feed our black bolt through the hole. You may have to turn it a little bit to kind of use the threads to pull it through the hole. Once you've got it started through the hole here, if it gets tight pushing it through, you can use a ratchet with a 13 millimeter socket and just start threading it through. The threads will pull it right on through. And now that our bolt's through, we can put our conical tooth washer on with the teeth facing towards the bumper and our nut. Now we can go back and tighten down our hardware. We're going to start with your larger nuts, which are going to be 18 millimeter socket, and your side bolt. Now repeat tightening the same three bolts on the other side. Now go back and torque the three bolts on each side for the specifications and your instructions. After you've repeated this on the other side, you can go back and tighten it up. Now with these snug down, we can go back and torque them per the specifications and our instructions using a 13 millimeter socket. And do that on the other side. Now we can go back, loosen these bolts, and reinstall our hanger. We installed them before to make sure that they'd be lined up properly to make it easier for reinstallation. and you repeat that on the other side. Now we can go back using our 13 millimeter socket and torque the exhaust hanger bolts to spec per your instructions. Now if you still have zip ties attached from before when you put your spacer assemblies up, you can just go back and snip that extra zip tie off. It's okay to leave the excess up there 
It's just holding those spacers together. Then put your panel back on. Now you can put your pin and clips back in. And that completes our installation of the DrawTight Max Frame Trailer Hitch on our 2016 Ford Escape.